All right, to this point, we have been doing simply supported beams that have two supports. Now we are going to do a cantilever beam, which has a single support, in this case, on the left side. And one way to illustrate it is I take my beam and then I basically um, em em embed it into the wall here. And um, that's one way to envision a cantilever beam. And, and so it, now we don't usually draw it that way. Uh, the way we normally draw a cantilever beam looks like this, where we have it fixed into the wall. But we can, in a lot of ways, it's. I want you to think about it in this manner, so that um, what we're going to do is we're going to make make a cut right there at this end of the beam and we have to recognize that that is fixed into the wall but we're making a cut there and sometimes people find it easier to envision the reactions at that location or the reactions at that location when you think of it as cutting the beam right there at the right there at the edge next to the wall all right so this very simple problem. I have a 10 kilonewton load at the end of this cantilever beam, and um, we're going to find the reactions and draw the shear and bending moment diagrams. So we've made this cut right there at the beam next to the wall. So what do I have? I've got I have three forces, <laughs> two forces in a moment. So we normally do, but it's a reaction. So I just write down. I don't. I'm not following my sign convention-ish thing at this point. I just do it like any other reaction. I draw it uh, how I want to because next to the letter. So I'm not writing V, N, and M. I'm writing an A, Y, an A, X, and an A, M because those are my reactions. And um, it doesn't matter. I can draw that up or down. I can draw that to the right or to the left, and I can draw that clockwise or counterclockwise. We will once we get the reactions, we'll get the right direction. So, um, again, we're going to have the sum of the forces in the x direction equally zero. So ax is zero. That's the way it's always going to be in this class. And um, now, well, we're just going to be careful and take our um, sum of the forces carefully, so we don't make mistakes. I'm going to take the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. I got a y equals 10 kilonewtons. And I take moments about a. Once we've, once we've established this free body diagram, you can get all the reactions. We've been doing it, so I'm not going to dwell on that. But notice I get am equals 60 kilonewton meters. There it is. And I get my a y is 10 kilonewtons. And then I just want to make sure... This is not an independent check, but when I'm all done and I draw the picture, I want to make sure that what goes up is equal to what goes down. So I have 10 up, I have 10 down. Um, okay, so now we draw the shear and bending moment diagrams while I follow the arrows. It says 10 up, over, that says 10 down. And then, now remember, we can't forget that I use the areas, but I have to pay attention to concentrated moments. That's counterclockwise 60, so I go down 60. That's positive 60 kilonewton meters. Go up like that. I know the slope is 10 because the value of the shear is 10. Okay, so... Uh, again, I have this concentrated moment right at the beginning. I have to not forget about it. I have to start at zero, but then I have to use that concentrated moment. That concentrated moment says go down 60 because it's counterclockwise. Just go down. Now, don't do this. In other words, uh, here's my shear diagram. And then I do my moment diagram, and oh, I forgot that there's a concentrated moment. I just pay attention to the areas. That says go up 60. So you go up 60, end up there, and you go, okay, I'm not at zero, so I'm just going to draw down like that. 
don't do that. So I'm, I'm telling you in advance not to do this. If you do it, you're going to lose a lot of points. So um, just remember, don't just arbitrarily go back to zero on your moment diagram. You, you, if you're not at zero, something has gone wrong. Go back and do it again. The other thing I want to point out here is that you should be able to uh, do this simple problem in your head. And I think it's important to be able to, to do some things in your head so that you have a gut feeling for what's going on. So, in other words, I'm looking at my cantilever. <laughs> the easiest thing to do is to take moments in your head about this point on the left. And, and when I see that this 10 kilonewtons does what? It causes a uh, clockwise moment here. Well, that means that to counter that, I have to have a counterclockwise moment over here. And the magnitude is easy. It's simply 10 times 6. So I've got my 10 times 6. It's 60 kilonewtons. 60 kilonewton meters, which means that, you know, I need 60 kilonewton meters, oops, kilonewton meters over here. So, and then I have to counter the 10, so I need 10 going up there. So, for this simple problem, you pretty much can do this in your head to get these two values. So I want you to at least practice that. Um, so again, what do I say? You're taking moments about this point. This is gives me clockwise, so that tells me I need to have counterclockwise over here. So that's how you get the direction. Everybody can get the magnitude where people struggle is getting the direction of the moment. And people can get the direction and magnitude of the force. That's easy because that's down. The other one's got to be up. So uh, people can get that. What they mess up on is the direction of that one. Again, the reasoning is that if I take moments about this point, and I'm interested in taking moments about this point because that's where I want to get the moment. <laughs> that's where I want to get it. So, you know, you can do it in your head. This, is, this gives me clockwise, so that's got to be clock, counterclockwise. All right. Um... I've given you everything here, so why don't you pause the video and do this particular problem based on everything you know at this state. All right, I'm assuming you did it. Well, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I follow my arrows. I go up 11, over, down 3, over, down 8. then I have these concentrated moments. I have three concentrated moments. I can't do the moment diagram just with the areas. I have to pay attention to the concentrated moments. So I start at zero. This is counterclockwise, so we're down 87. There's my area. I go up 22. That's clockwise, nine, so I go up nine. That area is 88. I go up 88. That is counterclockwise, so I drop down 32. So there you can see that it's pretty straightforward. Once I have the free body diagram, the rest of it is pretty straightforward. There's nothing different than what we have been doing all along. Just don't forget about the concentrated moments. Now, how can we get this sort of situation? Well, envision this. Suppose I have a cantilever beam, and I have two single-handled wrenches on it. Well, what does my free body diagram look like? I'm going to replace this single-handled wrench with what? I'm going to have its... I've got 3 times 3 is 9, so I get clockwise 9, and I get a downward 3. For this, I've got single-handled wrench again, which way is that? That goes counterclockwise. So I have a counterclockwise 8 times 4, 32, and then the 8 there. So this is 32, and there's my 8. Then I look at 
this free body diagram here, again, I put on my AY, my AM, and um, I'm going to find my reactions. I take the sum of the forces in the Y direction, and my AY is 11. I take the sum of the moments about point A. You can all do this. And I get AM is 87 kip feet. So I, you know, make sure that what do I do? Every, both of them are positive. So I simply put that 87 there. I put the 11 there. Don't have to change any directions of any arrows because they both came out positive. I get this. 87, 11. End result, this is the same problem. We just did it. So, no, we just did this, and we um, got this shear diagram, and uh, then we got that moment diagram. So, we got this free body diagram from our cantilever beam with two single-handled wrenches on it. So, what I will give you, I'll give you this on an exam. You have to create that, but you can all do that. Once you've created that, then you create that and you create that. So you should be capable. You need to be, prepare yourself to be capable of doing this. All right, so now I have another cantilever beam. I want you to do this one. So pause the video and do this. Okay, I'm assuming you paused it. So what do I have here? I've got my, that's 8 times 4 is 32. It's clockwise about the bolt. You can see that. So 32 kip feet clockwise, and I have the 8 kips at the bolt. I have an AYAM there. Oops. So I use this free body diagram to determine that AY is 23. And you can look at, pause the video and look at that. You get AM is equal to, to 265. So I end up with this free body diagram. And now I follow my rules. My rules are... I use the areas and the concentrated moments. So down 15 over, down 8 over, up 23. I get my areas. You can do that. And then I follow the areas, but where I hit the concentrated moments, I have to pay attention. I hit a concentrated moment at 6, and that's 32. So I go upward 32, down to 107. And then I'm here, and I go up 265, and I'm back at zero. Another one, cantilever beam. I simply, this is straightforward. I have the six skips per foot times eight feet. 48, where does it go? It goes at the center of the rectangle, so I have 48 kips there. What's the distance? That distance there is 8 feet. So I should be able to do this in my head as much as I can figure out 8 times 48 in my head. 8 times 48 is 384. So what do I end up with? I end up with um, my 48 going upward, my 384 going counterclockwise. And so I now look at this free body diagram. To draw the shear diagram, I go up 48 over, and then this total load is 48, so I go down to 40. It says I go down to zero. And um, the slope is negative six. Why is the slope negative six? Because that's kip for six kip per foot. Um, I get my areas. They, by coincidence, are the same. I start at zero. I look at my concentrated moment, which is counterclockwise. And um, 
then this is a positive 192, I go up 192. That's a positive 192, I go up 192. And of course, this one, this is a curve, it's not a straight line. Why? Because the slope is not, or sorry, the, um, there is a slope there, or there's, it's not, con the shear is not constant in that region. If the shear is not constant, the slope is not constant, which means if the slope is not constant, it's a curve. So right there, oops, right there, the slope is 48. And right here, the slope is 0. So positive 48, 0, looks like that. And, um, okay, here's a little sample problem again. You can do it in your head. Um, you can do this in your head. Again, how do I do it? 20 times 5 is 100. It's got to be counterclockwise. There's my 20. Okay, so you should be able to do these simple cantilever problems in your head. All right, I'm going to stop there.